If you remember, we compared the computers earlier. We've got the three uh, sections at the end we're trying to get to, modularity, standards, and software concentration. So the, the meat of what we want to talk about is the standards and software concentration and how computers are changing that. So we need to talk about this emerging world of computers and robotics. Let me talk for a second about PC-based robotics. That term can get me in trouble in a room full of engineers uh, and has in the past because it's, it's politically loaded. So when you hear me using the term PC-based robotics, what I really mean is it's a general term meaning computers in, in all the different formats that we're familiar with. And it could mean your laptop, it could mean uh, your Palm Pilot, your personal computer, it could even mean something like a phone that's using a 32-bit processor. It could even be your desktop computer if you chose to use that. We're not talking about a specific OS. We're not talking about uh, any specific manufacturers. We just simply mean that you use robotics in the common way that we understand them in robotics. So some of the commonalities in computers basically would be a 32-bit processor, your common I.O. that we're used to, which is serial, USB, uh, wireless technologies, things of that nature. So that's really all I mean when we say PC-based robotics. We don't know what format is going to win in the end. We don't know which ones are going to be the most successful, and uh, that's okay for now. But it's, it's really a general term. So don't attack me if, if you have preconceived notions of what PC means when you hear it. It's interesting to note that the processor itself is only one part of a robot. If you look at any given robot, it's going to have five main, five main sections. You're going to have mechanics, sensors, controllers, your processor, and software. So computers being merged with robotics is actually only one-fifth of a robotic system. So a lot of us have been very frustrated with why, why robotics isn't further along. A lot of people are saying, well, why aren't you guys more mature as an industry? We've watched computers blast way past robotics. We've watched communications technology blow way past. Why hasn't robotics kept up? You know, we've been talking about this sort of technology for a very long time. So let me tell you a little anecdote. In 1985, there was a movie called War Games that came out. And there was a computer in there that became self-aware. And to amuse itself, it decided to play uh, war games with the human race. So just to give you a hint, your computer at home today is about 500 times more powerful than that computer was back then. So it couldn't have happened until now. Back then when we were thinking about robotics being able to do these things, we were thinking about AI, forget about it. Back in 1985 when we talked about it, it was impossible. I don't think we're worried about our computers at home today becoming self-aware. So that's the point. We've probably been waiting for the processor to mature in order to start building the robotics that we've been thinking about. So, the computers being used in robotics is almost like the, uh, the big pink elephant in the room. That people, we talk about it, we know it's going to happen, but nobody has any real hard answers about how we're going to use it. And um, that's what I really want to focus on is how we can do that, how we can start to merge the two, and why we're ready for that now when we weren't before. So three major complaints that there used to be when it came to, uh, to computers was that it was too large, it's too expensive, and the I.O. is all wrong. They're not made for robotics. So now if we look at computers today, three of those problems have been solved. Computers are now small enough. Oh, that's my great slide for the emerging world of robotics and computers. <laughs> I wanted a robot and Jenny the girl I drove nuts putting this together, so all you're getting is a little doll. So that's what that is. The processors we're talking about, and here we go. That's the Pico ITX from Via. It's a little bit bigger than a credit card. Computers are now small enough. They're efficient. Uh, they're also cheap enough. That was the second thing. And thirdly, the I.O. being wrong, we now have the advent of bridgeware, which is solving the I.O. problem for us. So let's talk about bridgeware for a second. <coughs> bridgeware allows programmers to interact with electronics without having to know electronics. Bridgeware is being adopted by robotics in order to solve our problems when it comes to I.O. with computers. This is one of the examples that's out there. It's a serializer. It's made by Robotics Connection. On the left side, you've got, uh, they did it beautifully, they actually have modular uh, computer I.O. on the left, you can choose whether you want wireless, USB, um, serial, choose wireless. On the right side, you've got all your different robotics I.O. that you need. You've got your PWMs, your I squared C's, your DC motor controllers. So you look at it like a large breakout board or a large converting board. So you use one of these and merge it with a computer. You have all the I.O. you need for robotics, and now you have a processor that you can use. Another example would be fidgets. This is actually how I got my start. We started selling uh, fidgets in the US three years ago and then converted over to Trust Robotics. Uh, we fell in love with this concept of bridge work. We fell in love with the idea that I, as a programmer, could work with motors and lights and take sensory input and do anything I wanted to without having to know electronics. 
And that's when we realized, hey, this stuff's great in robotics, let's open up a robotics store instead. Uh, another example for Bridgeware is that it's very easy to control motors by using two different devices. On the left there you see servo controllers. There's one from Fidgets, one from Flulu, one from Parallax. I think you have to start your company name with a P for some reason in this area. On the right side you've got different sorts of motor controllers there. Uh, for those that don't know, a servo controller outputs a PWM signal. And motor controllers on the right take those in in order to uh, take their instructions. So on the left side you've got some serial and some USB connectors there. You can produce your PWM with one of those boards, plug it into a motor controller, and you can control anything from a tiny, lightweight robot all the way up to something that's extremely heavy and extremely powerful. There's already some modularity going on here, so we're very excited about seeing that. So, where we need to go is standards so that we can get to software concentration. And I'm going to talk today about how we can do that with computers and how this solves some of our problems. There's a migration that's happening as people move over to computers. Uh, keep in mind this migration isn't going to happen on the front lines of industry. It's not going to happen where there's mission critical things going on. It's going to happen in the basements and in the classrooms and trickle up from there. People are going to be problem solving for quite a while. The technology isn't perfect yet, and I'm not up here to convince you that it is. And I'm not up here to convince you that you need to start running uh, huge robotic arms with heavy OS systems on off-the-shelf computer components. That's not really what the message is. The message is more that we as a community need to start adapting to this technology and making use of it because it solves a lot of our problems. Uh, it's a lot of the things that we've been waiting for. So let's talk about what computers bring to robotics. Most importantly, they bring a foundation of standards to robotics. Uh, the Jupyter <coughs> processor is a standard when it comes to processors. It's all over the place. It's in all the computers that you see up there. Um, it's even in the small computers now. It's in your pocket, in your phone clouds, it's in your phones. Currently in robotics, everybody's building things on different systems and there's no transferability going on, and that's a major problem. Whereas people start adapting over to the PC as a standard platform for your processor, we can start transferring technology. The other thing that it brings to the table is high-level object-oriented languages and powerful GUI interfaces. These are the sorts of things that have been written and made for the PC. These are things that we can tap into and start developing our robotics and high-level languages. If there's only one thing that you guys take away from this talk today, I want it to be this. And that the software programmers are able to get into robotics if we start raising tools up to their level. It's the largest talent pool there is when it comes to technicians on the planet. For every electrical engineer that's out there, there are thousands of programmers. And I believe it's our job as a community of roboticists building <laughs> these tools to raise them up to the level where we can tap into that talent pool. Because we're really doing ourselves no service as we keep it only for the elite. The entry level for robotics right now is too high. You have to know mechanics, you have to know electronics, you have to know software all at once. And that's what's going to keep it moving slowly. If we can get to the point where the average software programmer or application developer can work on robotics, I guarantee you you're going to see it explode at that point. If there's one thing you guys take away today, I want it to do that. Really the goal in the end is that we want the best of both worlds. We want the capability of having standards, we want our powerful GUI interfaces, our high-level object-oriented languages, and we want to have a small form factor, energy-efficient processor in the end. Right now, the, the operating systems that are out there are probably too big, they're too heavy. Um, we don't have all of the things solved, but in the end, we can get closer and closer to real-time embedded systems using the standard chipsets and standard I.O. that we 